Good evening and welcome to the APIs Iron Government program for Tuesday, September 13th, 2022. Iron Government brings you the latest on government's plans, programs, policies, and projects. I am Bavin Oliver. Just ahead on this evening's program, communities in North Leeward constituency can look forward to even more improved road access. The government of West Virginia continues to invest in climate change mitigation and adaptation strategies. The government of SVG and the United Nations Development Systems sign instruments of agreement to authorize the implementation of a country implementation plan for the period 2022. Health services here received a boost thanks to a donation from the Republic of China, Taiwan. And the ECCB's governor visits the CW Prescott primary. These stories and more are just ahead, but first, let's join Inga Jackson for Newswatch. Good evening and welcome to News Watch for Tuesday, 13 September 2022. I am Inga Jackson. Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonsalves met with families of victims involved in the accident on Sunday, September 11th. Prime Minister extended his condolence as well as gave his assurance that the government will offer full support to the families. Dr. Gonsalves said it is a tragic time for the entire country and urged members of the community to support and comfort each other. Five young men lost their lives in the accident when the minivan in which they were traveling overturned. Members of the public can convey their condolence on the passing of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II at Government House. Queen Elizabeth was the longest-serving monarch. She ascended to her throne on 6 February 1956 and reigned until her passing on September 8, 2022. Construction of the U.S. $60 million Royal Mill Resort is well on the way. The hotel, which is located in Rotomill, would facilitate 15 luxury resident homes, two penthouses and 18 apartments, alongside shops, conference rooms, gym, business centers, among other facilities. At present, there is a total of 70 tradesmen contracted to work on the site. The hotel is expected to transform the landscape of the entire area and boost the room stock here on the mainland. Renovations has already begun at the Annisville Sporting Complex. Work will be carried out on the Double Decker Stand, the Frank Thomas Stand, the Bleachers, the Michael Finley Pavilion, the Administrative Building and the Media Center. The completion of repairs will enable the facility to host local and regional and international games in an effort to generate additional revenue. Approximately $2.3 million is earmarked for the upgrade. The National Telecommunication Regulation Commission, NTRC, will launch the 10th annual iCode 784 competition on Wednesday, 14 September 2022 at the NTRC's conference room. The competition is geared toward the creation of ideas or mobile applications to enhance the operations of businesses or a department within the public sector. Consumer and Public Relations Manager Rhea Lewis reveals how persons can be a part of the competition. Well, from the launch, that's the first stage, we go right into the registration. So the registration period is from September the 14th to October the 7th. That is where you are able to sign up, register as many times as you would like to. Um, you must enter in a team of either two or four persons. So even if at the time you register, you don't have your team members as yet, you still have about two to three weeks where you could gather the team members and enter the competition. Right? Then we have the preliminaries, which is the first round of judging. That happens October the 18th to the 20th. And the final round of judging, which is also the finals, happens on November 16th. Tomorrow's launch will see someone via the social media audience winning a prize. Apart from the attractive prices at the end of the competition, two members will have the opportunity to attend an event for startups hosted by GSMA in Barcelona in the next four years. 
That's all we have for Newswatch. We continue with Iron Government with Bavin Oliver. I am Inga Jackson. Good evening. Welcome to St. Vincent and the Grenadines, an island that ignites your senses with beautiful backdrops perfect for destination weddings. It is ideal for those looking to tie the knot in the Caribbean during the summer. St. Vincent has a number of stunning white sand and black sand beaches, the oldest botanic gardens in the Western Hemisphere exquisite cuisine from local restaurants if you are considering tying the knot on this beautiful caribbean island the first thing to do is familiarize yourself with the legal requirements for more information visit www.discoversvg.com saint vincent and the grenadines the caribbean you're looking for Welcome back. You're watching the APIs and Government. On Friday, September the 9th, the government officially opened coastal defense works that were recently completed in San Susi and Georgetown during a ceremony held at Caratel Georgetown. Cecil Harris is program manager with CDB's Natural Disaster Management Projects and RDVRP Consulting Manager. Harris says SVG is the first location in the Caribbean where the X Block system is used. Given the high implementation cost of sea defense works, a critical factor in the design methodology is what size of wave to design for. Designs are based on what engineers call return periods. The Georgetown and San Susi designs cater for hurricane waves with a one in 150 year return period. So basically, a storm that's gonna come along once on average in 150 years, these sea defense works were designed to resist the impact of those waves. The designs also cater for a 10 inch sea level rise. Another significant consideration for sea defense design is the nature of the material used. Studies were carried out to compare the use of boulders versus the concrete X blocks that you see actually used on the site. The unfortunate conclusion was that the local quarries at the time could not produce the size of boulder in the quantity, quality, and time schedule required for the Georgetown and San Susi projects. We resorted to X blocks. The choice of X blocks, however, did allow for the use of local sand and aggregate, which would have benefited the local economy. The construction of the sea defense works was undertaken primarily by a local contractor at San Susi, that's K Electric, for a sum of 8.6 million and a regional contractor at Georgetown, Obi Sadu, who sits at the head table, for a total amount of 26 million. In Georgetown, the project was divided into two, Georgetown 1A, which is south of the Caratal, and Georgetown 1B, which is north of the Caratal. The total cost of the two was 26 million. The contractors were held to the highest international quality standards and achieved acceptance by the internationally renowned consultants, Mott McDonald. This outcome was particularly satisfying as it augurs well for the local and regional construction sector that we can carry out these important works ourselves. All works commenced in January 2020. Georgetown 1A and San Susi were completed in August 2021, while Georgetown 1B, this section, was completed in November 2021. Harris also noted the significant reclamation of land as a result of the sea defense projects. More specifically to the project in Georgetown, the, the feasibility studies showed that the shoreline in the area retreated by more than 60 meters in 40 years. Given this aggressive rate of erosion, these works were essential and timely. Because of the high construction costs, sea defense design always tries to incorporate social amenities as best the location will allow. Hence, you will notice the boardwalks in Leyu and in Georgetown behind me. 
In Georgetown, we also tried to create a protected area for swimming, but unfortunately, the cost was just too prohibitive. In Sandy Bay, there will be a recreation park with a small stage for outdoor events in the section between the Cayo and Caro rivers. This is a project funded by CDB. At E.T. Joshua Airport, as part of the new city design, there will be a recreation, there will be the recreation of a small beach, a marina, and of course, a boardwalk. At Calioqua, there will be the reestablishment of a boardwalk as part of the sea defense works. For the new works just described, funding from the CDB is in place for Sandy Bay with bids to be advertised before the year's end. Meanwhile, Minister of Agriculture Subota Caesar says the ministry is responding to a request for a $10 million proposal for a further fleet expansion program through the Ministry of Agriculture and Fisheries. Caesar says Cabinet has already approved the purchase of 34 boats and 27 engines to prepare local fishers for the huge demand for seafood in excess of $60 million annually by Rainforest Seafoods based at Kaliakwa. On Wednesday, when the Cabinet of this country approved a very important project for fleet expansion, fleet expansion in this country. The cabinet approved for 34 boats and 27 engines additional to what we already have for the fishermen in this country. And what I want to add, when we speak about the fishing industry in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, we must always remember to begin from first principles. That it was the vision and foresight of the Honorable Prime Minister to construct the Argyle International Airport that caused us to advertise for private-public partnerships, the fisheries centers, and we were able to attract rainforest seafoods. And they signed a contract with the government to purchase a minimum of $20 million worth of fish from the fishermen in this country. Per year. Per year. And that is at the minimum. I was advised that it can go all the way up to $45 to $60 million annually. Because of that policy, we embarked on a project, Joint Liver Fleet Expansion, with KCCU and... Uh, they are going to place the order for these boats, 34 boats with engines and 27 engines. And I want to encourage all the persons who are into fishing in this area and other areas, some areas are non-traditional areas, do not shy away from the fishing industry. Last week, I had a, a meeting with the hard-working Minister of Finance and his staff and other colleagues from the Cabinet. And I was elated when I was advised that I should put together a proposal for 10 million US dollars as an injection to the agriculture and fishery sectors. Government is proceeding with plans to construct the Stanley Richards Market in Georgetown. This according to Prime Minister Dr. The Honorable Ralph Gonzalez, who was speaking at the launch of the Coastal Defense Works ceremony held at Caratel, Georgetown. Out of this set of money from the $118 million, $180 million under the RDVRP, which built this, we also build in this area a satellite warehouse in Noel. We build Sabi the Road in Fireborn, Lincoln, Park Hill, and Monganan. We build a bridge up in Congo Valley. We do the design for the stabilization at Monganan. All those things are done. And what we have remaining to do, we're going to build a, a nice market right here where Mr. Crichton where Mr. Raphael Crichton's former property was. 
We have acquired the property. He's contesting the valuation, which is his right, and that is going through the relevant processes. Don't go away. Iron Government continues after the break. If you are working with the road cleaning program or receiving temporary financial assistance under the Volcanic Eruption Emergency Project, here's how you can withdraw money from the ATM using your bank card. Insert your card into the machine. Enter your PIN. On the home screen, select Withdraw. Then select Check-in Balance. Enter the amount you would like to withdraw. It must be a whole dollar amount and multiples of 20. For example, 20, 40, 60, etc. Ensure you enter the right amount, then select Correct. If you would like a receipt for the transaction, click Yes. Take your card, cash, and your receipt. This message was brought to you by the Ministry of Finance, Economic Planning and Information Technology and the World Bank. Welcome back. A new roadway called the Lance Mahout Road is being given serious consideration by government to connect the communities of Wallanabu and Cumberland and other communities along the Mandela Highway. Speaking on September the 8th at the opening of the Long Line Road at Coles Hill, North Leeward, engineer Brent Bailey says the estimated 1.2 km Lance Mahout Road would bypass the Belle Isle mountain range and is expected to shorten the travel distance between Wallanabukum and Cumberland. Prime Minister, there is a road <laughs> um, that is called the Lance Mahout Road. It, it, it extends from um, curtains, well, uh, Walilabu curtains, yes. and it actually comes out here in spring. It's about 1.2 kilometers, and the, taking the seven kilometer run versus the one kilometer run over that, that hill is going to make a significant difference in terms of the travel time for, for all persons living from, you know, from Richmond, Fitzhugh's, uh, Chateau, all the way down um, in terms of the travel time to get to town. I know because I, I did it every day for the last two years. It's, it's a challenge in of itself. Uh, how much do you think it may cost? Eight million, well, seven, eight million. For, for Every, one, it, it, it's about 1.2 kilometers. It's a short road. But the, the importance really is how is the reduction in the travel time. Yeah, because it, it eliminates the entire Bell, um, spring um, all the way to Belle Isle, come down to Wally Labou. Minister of Finance, the Honorable Camilla Gonzalez, also supports the proposed roadway, saying government would find the finance to make the road a reality. We understand the challenges of moving around in this constituency. And if the road costs what Brent said it will cost, we will find a way to get it done. Now, it's no small thing when the Prime Minister asked him if he would do the design for free. Because while he was up there talking, I checked my iPad to see how much we paid the design firm for this road. And it's $640,000 we pay to design this road. So I go agree to it. And if it costs more, we take it out of the design money. Area Representative and Minister of Tourism, Civil Aviation, Sustainable Development and Culture, the Honorable Carlos James, gave full support for the proposed project. He also spoke of other road developments in North Leeward. But of interest to me, and I want to thank very much Brent for starting the ball rolling on the suggested topic of this new road in Lansmore because many years ago a few persons including a gentleman by the name of Louis Providence 
had indicated to me that the possibility exists for us to shave off a significant amount of time traveling to Kingston by eliminating going around Gordon Yard and down Belisle Road, those winding roads, and go straight over into Kilton's and coming out at Cumberland. At the time, I told Louis that that exercise would have been a very expensive one. But I'm happy to know Brent, who is an engineer of many years, has calculated in his own mind that the road does not require the sufficiency of resources which I taught to start the construction of that new road that takes us into Kilton's and from there on into Kingston. And I am happy that the Prime Minister has given serious consideration to it. I saw him making the note, and it is something I know my government is going to explore. Our Prime Minister is a very good man, a man who loves the people of North Leeward. And I know he has a soft spot in his heart for the people of this constituency. I want to say one for Lee, what he going to say? How much? But that road will tie in perfectly with the new de developmental thrust that we are going to embark on in terms of ecotourism. Don't go away. Iron Government continues after the break. A recent report from the International Monetary Fund says St. Vincent and the Grenadines tourism sector is well positioned to support long-term growth. The combination of attractive nature, the new airport, and the rich agricultural base creates conditions for more value added and job opportunities. The ongoing expansion of room capacity is a move in the right direction and needs to be accompanied by strengthened air connectivity, including at the interregional level, and further enhancement of road infrastructure. Developing the linkages between tourism and agriculture and fisheries would create synergies for economic development. We're looking at this stage of, of building out our tourism product, enhancing um, our existing sites and creating new sites for visitors and, and locals. And when you tie that into having daily flights coming into St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and also with the construction of all the major hotels on mainland, I mean, it's really about building out our tourism product. It's an emerging tourism destination, and we're certainly looking at, at, at developing um, our tourism product. Welcome back. On Friday, September 9th, the government of St. Vincent and the Grandines and the United Nations Development Systems signed instruments of agreements to authorize implementation of a country implementation plan for the period of 2022 to 2023. Speaking at a brief signing ceremony, which was held at Cabinet Room, UN Resident Coordinator for Barbados and the Eastern Caribbean, Didier Trebuk, says the UN has observed a lot of work which has been done since the volcanic eruptions of April 2021. The UN Resident Coordinator applauded the government of SVG for the extent of work done to improve the living conditions of Vincentians. I want to say that, of course, last year was a very difficult year. St. Vincent with the volcanic eruption, as we said, um, sort of crisis within the crisis, impact of the COVID pandemic, health, social economic impact. Now, the rise of cost of living, uh, we call it the triple crisis in the UN. Food, energy prices going up worldwide, uh, the financing crisis, which always is an issue we know for small island developing states. And we have had the opportunity to discuss this during those days. Uh, and we're trying to work at the global level, at the regional level, uh, with you to advocate for the specialism, I would say, of seeds uh, and the special condition and um, perhaps uh, certainly the need to recognize better the dimension of vulnerability for uh, measuring 
uh, not only income, but multidimensional, um, uh, I would say, indices to be better able to ad- access financing and particularly climate financing in a country like St. Vincent. So uh, within within that context, uh, we, we are aware that this is a long journey. Um, but what we have seen also when, for example, we went on, a, on the new settlement of uh, new houses built, uh, we have seen people who have gone back on their feet, uh, who have hope, who have projects, who have rebuilt livelihoods. You mentioned 700 houses repaired, for example. But a lot of work has been done uh, also on, on rebuilding livelihoods, making livelihoods and people's life more resilient. And we're very honored to have been part of some of those initiatives uh, in a way. Prime Minister Dr. The Honorable Ralph Gonzalez and UN Resident Coordinator for Barbados and the Eastern Caribbean, Didier Chabuk, both signed the CIP instrument of agreement. The CIP operationalized a five-year multicultural sustainable development cooperation framework, which was developed for the English and Dutch-speaking Caribbean covering the period 2022 to 2026, and guides the planning and implementation of UN development activities in fulfillment of the 2030 Agenda. Also on September 9th, SPG became the second OECS country to establish a UN common premises that will facilitate UN offices and agencies in SPG to operate under one roof. Don't go away. Iron Government continues after the break. The hurricane season is upon us, and as we know, hurricanes can be dangerous. Listening to the hurricane warning messages and planning ahead can reduce the chances of injury or major property damage. Before a storm or hurricane hits, get to know your emergency shelters. Contact Nemo for the closest shelter to you. Have disaster supplies on hand, flashlight and extra batteries, portable battery-operated radio and extra batteries, first aid kit, non-perishable canned food and water, non-electric can opener, essential medicines, cash and credit cards, and sturdy shoes and raincoats. Where possible, apply hurricane roof straps. Review your insurance policy and ensure you have adequate coverage. Do not take chances with your life and property. Be hurricane ready today. A message from the Agency for Public Information and this station. Welcome back. Prime Minister Dr. The Honorable Ralph Gonzalez is urging young people to take advantage of educational, sporting and training opportunities available. Dr. Gonzalez stressed that there has been an increase in gun activity among young males recently and cautioned that there is no opportunity in guns. The Prime Minister was speaking at the opening of the Leigh Pavilion on Sunday, September the 11th, 2022. But I'm just asking you that we must try not to create additional difficulties for ourselves. Like for instance, the increased criminal activity with guns among some young males. I just want to make the simple point. You can't live in a virtual world, you have to live in a real world. And there's no opportunity in guns. There are a lot of opportunities in the country for young people, including young males, for training, for education, for jobs, prime, if you want to get into business, sports, culture. We send in a lot of students overseas in sporting and cultural, um, for sporting and cultural training and education and competitions. And you think you may be big and strong, 
and your gun might give you a little sense of power. But I tell you, you kill somebody today, put your pot on the fire, that either that person's friends or families are coming at you tomorrow or day after tomorrow. It makes absolutely no sense. There are some people who tell me that people move into guns because of hardship. Well, how is it that you had much more hardship long ago and you didn't have as many guns? Eh? And how is it that some of the people, in fact, many of them with the guns, they're not hand to mouth? Not at all hand to mouth. I am witnessing something happening in the world today, not just only in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, but the Caribbean in the United States all about. People seem to, to think that they could live in a virtual world. They watch Instagram, they go on the internet and they see certain things. And they transport themselves. And what they want to do is to put postings to show them with guns or postings that they are bad men and they are women wrong them and all kind of simi dimi. No. There's a real world. Not that what you see on Instagram or on Facebook. That's a virtual world. And you have to keep your feet grounded. And if you have any problems in keeping your feet grounded, talk to your mother and your father and your grandmother and your grandfather and your great-grandmother and your great-grandfather. Talk with the elders in the community. Don't go away. The Iron Government continues after the break. Read, learn, grow. The children of the future have them. Read, learn, grow. Only reading is the key, so have them. Read, learn, grow. Let's show them how much fun it is to read, learn, grow. So parents, you play your part. First and foremost, reading from so young is advantageous. Link with the teachers. Working hand in hand is a must. Just 10 minutes of your child reading to you is a plus. Get fun books, make reading priority. When children read, they are able to learn. And the more they learn, the more they grow. So parents help the kids read, learn, go. Reading is fun, kids have to know. Read, learn, grow. The children of the future help them read, learn, grow. So parents, you play your part. This message is brought to you by the OECS USAID Early Learners Program, funded by United States Agency for International Development. For more information, log on to www.oecs.org slash ELP. Welcome back. Governor of the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank, Timothy Antoine, is currently visiting ECCU member states as part of the bank's country outreach program. On Monday, September the 12th, the governor visited the CW Prescott Primary, which benefits from a special mentorship program designed to help youngsters develop financial literacy and other skills. During the first visit since taking up governorship of the ECCB, the governor toured the school with Principal Suzette Abbott King. The API's Haller John was along for the tour and filed this report. Listen well, make mommy and daddy proud, make their school proud. And remember you're working for, you're studying for not just your family, but for your country. Always remember that. Always remember that, okay? And maybe just maybe some of you, I'll see some of you at the Central Bank. <laughs> Alright? God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes. Okay. Yeah, so this you. is our literacy center. 
a special event at the Peace Memorial Hall in honor of the ECCB governor's visit, at which time Principal Suzette Abbott-King spoke of the long-standing relationship of the CW Prescott Primary School and the ECCB. Over the last couple of years, the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank has been partnering with the CW Prescott Primary School through its mentorship program. This program targets students from grades 4 to 6. Our students have benefited tremendously from this program. In these challenging economic times, your financial literacy programs have taught our boys and girls how to be thriftier. Our students have definitely seen the value of making good use of their allowances by saving. This is quite evident from the number of students who are members of the school corp. Additionally, every year the local branch of the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank sponsors our top performers, male and female, in mathematics at the grade 5 level. Give them a round of applause for being our good corporate citizens. Two of our, two of our students, Jordan Hunt and Levi Burnett, now students of the St. Vincent Grammar School, were host of the Bank Saturday Mornings program held on NBC Radio 75, dubbed ECCB Children's Connection Program. This exposure helped them a great deal. They did an excellent job. So put your hands together for Jordan and Levi, and they are present here with us today. When he addressed the students, Antoine gave valuable advice. And now three small little bits of advice. One, Put God first. You heard, you sang the song, Our Faith Will See Us True, and you said in another part, in Our Faith in God. That is so, so important. That's number one. Secondly, read all you can. Read all you can. Remember, how many of you want to be leaders? Ah, well, you cannot. Lead if you do not read. You have to read. And third and final, build your country. St. Vincent and the Grenadines belong to you. You 
have to build this country. You have to build it. So as you go through education, keep in mind, yes, I'm doing it for me and my family, but I'm also doing it for my country. And don't, don't, don't do like some people who leave and go and never come back. If you have to go and study, go and study and come back. But come back and build your country. This country belongs to you. Those are my parting words of advice. Put God first. Read all you can. Build your country. Thank you. God bless you all. The API later caught up with Dr. Antoine to sum up his visit. We saw the fruits of your labor, technically seeing two young men um, grace the stage today as part of um, the program that the school has in terms of developing the youth. How do you see this continuing? Well, we believe this is a very important initiative by the bank with CW Prescott. And let me just say, I was particularly pleased to see the young men I'm excited about seeing young people generally, but let's face it, we have a challenge in our region with young men staying in school, finishing school. And so to see two of them part of the ECTV uh, Connection Program, Children's Connection Program, graduate now, they were hosts, they're now gone to grammar school. Their confidence, their additional experience, to me, that's what it's all about. So you can expect us to continue with this program. Uh, we hope to see other students from CW Primary step forward, Prescott Primary step forward and be part of the program. Because again, what we're investing in are really life skills. Part of the competence of a 21st century student is confidence. Confidence. That is about confidence. Wonderful. And you just completed a tour of the school facilities themselves itself and interestingly enough you entered the library and noted uh, a, a little bit of the technology missing there which of course you pledged your bank support is this something also that you're willing to continue as well with the school absolutely absolutely uh, we are in the te technolo technological age uh, we have to give our teachers the tools to be able to better deliver in the classroom uh, so that we can secure better learning outcomes. And clearly I saw needs uh, in the library and immediately on the spot, the principal uh, highlighted them and we immediately agreed we will help. And I just want to talk to the aesthetic because the school is noted for one of the being child friendly and there's a lot of artwork and that sort of thing. What, do you, what, do, what are your thoughts about that? Yeah, I, I noticed that and again it shocked me that there is this um, commitment to arts and culture because it, you need to be well-rounded. Uh, it's not just about subjects, it's about skills, it's about confidence, it's about a deeper understanding of what Prime Minister Gonzalez would call the Caribbean civilization. And I agree with that. So I certainly took note of that. It's not something you see in many of our schools around the Caribbean and in the ECCU. And to me, that sets the school apart as well. And uh, long may that tradition continue. And long may your relationship continue. Thank you very much. Diabetes is among the top three leading causes of death. Are you living with diabetes? If so, you may be at risk for developing complications, especially during this COVID pandemic. Let's tackle this problem by complying with taking your medication, increasing your physical activities, increasing eating a balanced and nutritious diet, checking your feet as foot care is important, and contacting your healthcare provider. Remember, diabetes can lead to blindness, amputation and numerous harmful and life-threatening effects. Protect yourself. Know your numbers. Hearts Movement SVG reminds you to love your body and treat it right. Your health is shared responsibility. Welcome back. 
Health services are further being strengthened through the assistance from the Republic of China on Taiwan. Yesterday, an ambulance was donated to the Milton Keto Memorial Hospital, courtesy the Republic of China on Taiwan. Speaking at the handing over ceremony, Ambassador of the Republic of China on Taiwan, His Excellency Peter Shea Lan, said Taiwan remains committed to supporting developmental projects and programs in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Uh, today, I'm glad uh, to participate in this handover ceremonies. I think this project is uh, a continued uh, effort for uh, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in, in Taiwan to work with our city and county governments to identify existing resources and then uh, in response to uh, the request and needs from our uh, diplomatic allies. And we are pleased that we are finally secured uh, this ambulance from the Department of Health of the city of Taipei, which is the capital city of Taiwan, and will be able to, after uh, a long delay because of the disruption of the COVID-19, uh, we finally were able to send over the ambulance to here. And I'm glad that today we'll be able to hand it over to uh, the government and the people and of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Now, in addition to that, I am also happy to report that uh, under another program of public health, which is to the enhancement of the public health emergency response system, we were able to send two, 10 uh, seat instructors from St. Vincent and Grenadines to uh, Taiwan in April, and they are now uh, uh, completed their training and safely travel back to St. Vincent and Grenadines. Uh, another thing is um, another uh, hospital, Mackay Hospital in Taiwan, who, which has been working very hard with St. Vincent and the Grenadines, will be sending the, their first ever delegation again after the long uh, disruption from the COVID-19. So add in the ambulance, uh, the training courses, and the visit of uh, Mackay Hospital, I think our cooperation with St. Vincent and Grenadines will certainly continue to grow. The Minister of Health, Wellness and the Environment, the Honorable Sinclair Prince, thanked the government and people of Taiwan for their continued support of the development of this country. I'm very happy today to receive on behalf of the government and the Ministry of Health, uh, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, this ambulance from the government of Taiwan, although it came through the local government system there, and we're very grateful for it. We've always been assisted by the government of Taiwan in many ways. We have had over the past years a lot of training, long-term and uh, short-term training for personnel in the Ministry of Health. Uh, during our special period since 2020, we received uh, vaccines, we received thermometers, uh, PPEs, um, we also got um, antigen tests and the like to tide us over this particular special period. Um, we have done work, especially in NCDs with the Taiwan government, uh, technical support um, in the sense that we have been focusing mainly on hypertension and diabetes as they are very critical here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines at the moment. And at the moment we are working on, as the ambassador said, the public health um, emergency system enhancement project. And uh, that, of course, will, be, uh, will benefit from tremendously. Um, we are trying to upgrade and expand our ambulance fleet. Um, what we have now is aging, and uh, we are trying to do our best in this regard. And this particular ambulance will add to that. Of course, we will get more um, on a different project, as you mentioned, and we have already ordered two others through another um, collaborative partner. So this is one of the ways in which we're trying to enhance our health systems here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, our ambulance service. I intend to speak with the persons responsible to look at how we deploy our ambulances, uh, how we maintain them, uh, what we do with them the, the, in terms of getting people to work on them and, that, and the like. But that is something that will come soon. So we thank you very much again, um, Ambassador Land, for this uh, gesture. And we hope that um, it will go a long way in helping us in our uh, services here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Thank you. And that's how we end the APIs and government. Thank you for viewing. For more news and updates, check out our daily reports on Facebook. And don't forget to check out our Man and SVG on Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays from 6 a.m. 
Until next time, I am Bavin Oliver. Have a good evening.